what the heck is going on guys because this is the a django tutorial video and congratulations for uh, just completing seven django tutorial videos i know as a beginner it must be pretty hard for you and you might have some problems in between uh make sure if you have any problem feel free to message me anywhere you're watching this video i'll pretty sure i'll respond as fast as i can and feel also free to just google and search on stack overflow for your problems but you know just feel free to message me but anyways in the last video just to recap we added all of these cool html files and we created this base.html file which we are able to just reuse and apply to our different index.html files so we created this uh, beautiful navigation bar and in this video we are going to be learning how to uh, basically add database to our website so why do we exactly need database for our personal website so I'm kind of adding it just because I want to show you how database is created and how I, we can just add stuff to our database in Django. Because it's the most beautiful thing inside Django to be honest. It's so easy and it's so pretty. If you have done databases before in like MySQL or something. So what you basically do is you like write statements like SQL insert and then you insert stuff inside the database. And then you have to kind of view all the tables by writing all these weird commands and stuff. Django makes it very, very, very simple as you're going to be seeing in a, just a couple of minutes. So what we want ideally for our contact page is that there should be a couple of uh, form elements over here. If you don't know what a form is, a form is basically like a name. So you can think of as this Google search bar as a form, uh, basically like an edit form where you can just write stuff. And when we press on enter, this stuff actually goes to the database where it's processed and then it just throws out an output, which in case of Google is just a bunch of search results. So in our case for contact, what you want is when we complete the form, for example, email, subject line, and uh, maybe some kind of a message, when we submit that, that should go back to our database and we as a user, not as a user, as the administrator of my personal website, I should be able to see all those messages inside my contact form. So let's let's do that in this video. So what we are going to do is we are not going to focus on this contact.html. We are not going to be building the actual forms in this video, but we are going to be learning about the database and how we can add stuff to our database and view it inside our admin panel. That is the default admin panel of Django. So what we are going to be doing is let's first understand what exactly this models.py file means and uh, what is models. So this models.py file is actually pretty important and this models.py file you can find inside this my site app, uh, app folder and inside this my site app folder there is this file called models.py. So for every app there are going to be different models.py file. So this inside this models.py file, we are going to be creating our database. So what exactly is a model? So if you search inside a dictionary, you can uh, probably you'll probably find something along the lines as it is kind of a blueprint for a series of actions that you want to achieve. So if you want to create a building and example, let's say example, you are an architect. So you'll probably be creating a model on a piece of paper and then you'll actually be building the building. <laughs> uh, so and if you are not a weird person, you'll also probably find uh, like definitions of models like fashion people and stuff like that. But this is about coding and not about fashion. Although you can say like coding is also kind of a fashion because we are artists and that is what we do. But I'm just speaking a bunch of nonsense. So I'll just get back to models. So yeah, a model is basically a kind of a blueprint for the database that we want to create. So for example, even before we go into email, subject lines and the message part of our contact page, I just want to give you a very small example of adding stuff to our database. So you can imagine there is a class, uh, just a simple college class or a school class. And inside there, there are a bunch, bunch of students and each student has a first name and a last name. So we are going to be creating a table or a model for that. And how do we create that? We just write class. And then we are going to be creating a model of students. So we just write student. And then inside that we write models dot model. And inside this, we need the first name and the last name of the student. So we can just write first underscore name equals to models dot. And then we are going to be writing the character field because what is this character field? So if you have done any kind of database work, you probably understand that, uh, or if you, even if you haven't, you can kind of understand this as every every field inside the database or a table 
has a different kind of stuff. So for example, if you had to store integers inside your database, instead of character field, we'll probably be writing something like integer field and stuff like that. This is basically to tell Django what kind of data we are going to be entering inside the database. So in our case, we are going to be entering a string or which can be understood as a bunch of characters. So we can just write character field and we can put the max length as this is to basically limit the amount of characters that can go inside this uh, box. So, or inside this database, uh, not exactly this database, you can understand this first name as kind of a kind of a row column kind of a thing inside a table uh, and the student just to like kind of understand, you can think of the student as the table name. All right. And the stuff inside it is basically the items inside this table. Actually, you know what one cool thing is, <laughs> I know I'm kind of going on a tangent because I haven't put the max length over here. Actually, let me just put it this as 30 characters. So one cool thing about Django is what it does is when it's creating the table, right? What it does is it actually creates the table by the name of, in our case, it will be my site underscore student. So it basically uses the app name and then it uses the name of the class that we have given over here. So that is how Django does it. I'm just going to remove this comment from over here and we need the last name. So I'm just going to be adding the last name over here. Uh, let's just add this as last name. And this should be good enough. All right. So what we are going to do is, is it's just right now it's just under models.py and you can't actually see these fields right now. We need to add them to our uh, database. And how do we do that? We do that by using something known as migrations. We have already talked about migrations and just as a reminder, migrations is kind of a way we add stuff inside our database in Django. So inside this migrations folder, you can see this is just empty except this uh, init file, which doesn't really mean anything because it's empty. But anyway, inside our migrations folder, there is nothing. So there is nothing added inside a database. How do we add stuff inside a database? We first create something inside the model that is in our case is a student. Then we go to uh, this manage.py and then we write make migrations. And then we write the app name, which in our case is my site. We just write my site and press enter. So it's just going to add stuff to our database. Actually, this will not exactly add stuff. It's just telling Django that, hey, we have something to add inside our database. Now, if we look inside this uh, file that has been created after adding stuff to our database, not adding stuff, just telling Django that we have added stuff to our database, you can just see that over here it says migrations.create models and the model name is student. And then it has three values, three fields the ID, the first name and the last name. So we have added actually the first name and the last name in our models.py file. But what is this ID over here? So this ID is basically, you can think of it as a role number of students. This is automatically created by Django. Whenever you are adding uh, any kind of entries inside the database, it kind of, or any kind of model inside the database, it automatically adds this uh, ID inside the model. And it basically increase every time you add a new entry. So for example, let's say the first student is called John Smith. So the first name will be John, the last name will be Smith and the ID will be one. Now the second, maybe the second student is called Anastasia Steele. I took it from 50 shades of gray, I think, but the first name will be Anastasia. The second name, last name will be Steele and the ID will be two. So it's automatically increased whenever you add another item inside the, inside your model. If you don't want it to increase, you can just put this as false. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So now with this make migrations, so just to show you the command that is over here, if we can increase the size of this thing. So what we did was we wrote make migrations dot my space, my site, and it says migrations for my site, create model student. So we have just told Django that we want to add this model to our database, but actually it hasn't been yet added to the database. For that, we have to actually write migrate and press enter. So it's going to migrate and it says applying my site dot triple zero one underscore initial, which is this file over here. And now it has actually been added to our database. Now, how do we actually see these, uh, this uh, model inside a database? Now there are two ways to do that. First is you can watch it um, using the admin panel that we are going to be learning in this video, how to do that. It's freaking easy when you know how to do it. And the second way to do it is shell. And we are going to cover that maybe in the next video, but it's not that important for uh, beginner purposes. So we are going to have a look.
maybe in the next video, but I'm not sure. But anyways, let's understand how to view the database that we have added of student inside our uh, admin panel. So for that, we are going to look at this file called admin.py file inside our my site app folder. So what is this admin.py file? This admin.py file is responsible for anything that goes inside our admin administration panel. So let's actually have a look at our administration panel by just running the server and pressing enter. So I discussed this administration panel in the first and the second video of this, uh, you know, just this uh, tutorial series in the first and the second video. So how do we access that admin panel? If you forgot, we just have to write admin over here, press enter. And I've already created a super user. If we haven't yet created a super user, just stop this server and write create super user, press enter and it will ask you to put your uh, username and the password. You can put that in, then just log in using that uh, login commands. So anyways, over here in our Django administration, you can see there is no uh, model called students. So what we are going to do is to add it to our admin panel. We are going to go to this admin.py file. Let's minimize this. And inside this admin.py file, we are going to write admin dot site dot register register. And inside this, we are going to write our model name. But before even we write the model name, we actually need to import this uh, student model inside our admin panel. So we can just go over, over here and we can write from dot models and dot is basically for uh, this my site app in reference to my site app. So what we are saying, hey, by dot, what we mean, go to the app that this models.py file is currently in. So it goes to this my site app and then it searches for the models file that is models.py file. And then it goes inside this models.py file and we can just write students now and we'll import that model inside our admin.py file. And now over here, we can just write student and that's pretty much it. Now we can just save it and hopefully this will refresh on its own like it did. And now we can go back over here, press enter. And as you can see, there is this new cool uh, students my, under, under my site app, there's this new students model that has been created. So we can open it up and you can see there is nothing right now. So let's add a new student. So let's click on this add student and we can just write John, the last name as Smith and press save. And as you can see, there is this new object that has been created, which says student object one. So students is a class and we are creating kind of objects inside it. And each of this object has items. All right. So let's add another one, another student just for fun. Let's call this, um, what should we call this? Not J because you already used that. Let's call this Daniel Schumann. I don't know why I call it Schumann, but okay. So this is the student object two. This is the subject object one. Now, what if we wanted to change the name of these uh, items inside our student class? So these objects don't actually look good right now. And if you're actually working on a big database and a big project, this can actually like feel pretty, pretty frustrating to look at the student object two, student object one. What we are going to be doing is we are going to be replacing these object names with uh, the last name. So for that, just to make sure that our view looks good, we are going to go to this models.py file and we are going to create this function called str function. And inside this, we are just going to return something. We are going to return self dot and then the item name that you want to be shown that you want to be shown inside of uh, instead of this uh, object name. So we can just call it uh, something like first name over here. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully the server, the server has refreshed. It has refreshed now. Let's actually minimize this a little bit. Let's go back and press enter. And as you can see, it has been changed to Daniel and John. And if we click inside it, you can see the first name is Daniel and then Schumann. So this is this was just for example. Now let's actually create the database that we want. So the database that we want, actually even before that, let me show you what happens if you mess up. So let's say you were trying to create this uh, model and you messed up somewhere. And it's actually not working when you try to click it. It's showing you something like uh, could not find table and stuff like that. Sometimes when you're a beginner, you kind of mess up a lot. So what should we do in that case? If you mess up somewhere and it's giving you a migration, some kind of an error or any kind of error inside the database, how do you start from scratch? 
So to start from scratch, it's actually a little bit of a tedious process. You've got to delete this triple zero one initial dot by file. So we are going to delete this file over here. All right. And then we are, we have to delete this SQLite three file from here. What this will do is it will refresh all the database and you'll have to create even the admin password again. But this is only like uh, if you mess up somewhere and in the production uh, phase and if you have a lot of like 1000 2000 users, don't do this because it's going to remove your whole database. But for in our case, we are just in production mode. So if you mess up somewhere while learning these tutorials, you can just delete first all the fo all the files from migrations folder and then delete this dbq db.sqlite3 uh, file. Just click on OK, delete anyway. And as you can see, now we don't have anything over here. Now if we probably click on, uh, actually we have stopped the server, it's not gonna work. But what we can do now is uh, we have to make sure that all the migrations are done again. So we can just write migrate over here and this will make sure that all the migrations are done again and will create the file, a SQLite file again for us. So let's just wait for it to happen. And as you can see, this file has been created. And now we can add this migration again, that is the student migration again. So we can just write, uh, make migrations, my site and press enter. And now this tells the Django that, hey, we want to add this student model inside our database. And that's why this initial file is created. But now we actually have to add this file inside the database, inside this model. Sorry, we have to actually add this model inside the database. I don't know why I'm slip, slipping on my words. It's probably because my throat is a little bit itchy, but that's okay. So now we have to write the migrate again, press enter. And this is going to add stuff, actually add stuff inside the database. So now it's uh, okay, but we won't be able to see stuff inside our admin panel. So just get, show you like uh, an example, if we write the run server and let it run, come on. And if we go back to our admin panel, as you can see, we have been logged out. And if we use the previous password, it will probably show that it is wrong, something like that. So we have to create the admin user and uh, password again. So this is basically you're starting from scratch after deleting these files. So we have to create it again, which we can do with create super user, press enter. And now the steps are pretty common. I just want it to be admin, leave the email address and the password can be something like, um, hello world. Actually, let me add a little bit of more complexity to, complexity to it. Otherwise, Django give you, is going to give you an uh, warning that this password is too weak. And now let's do it again. Hello world. Press enter. All right. The super user has been created successfully. So we can write admin and we just write one at the rate. Hello. I can't believe I messed up the password. Uh, -E -L -L -O -W -O -R -L -D, press enter and the site can't be reached because I'm a stupid person and we have to run the run server again. Let's wait for it to run. All right, let's reload this thing. Come on, baby. All right, now we can just write admin one at the rate H E W -L, L O W R L D press enter. And as you can see, again, the students has been added to our database, but all of that previous stuff has been removed because we basically deleted all the files. So now what we're going to do is uh, we are going to create our, uh, our model that we wanted to create. So for that, we are going to create a new class over here. And instead of student, we are going to write contact and models dot model pretty much the same. And inside this, we are going to write uh, email equal to models. And inside this, we can just write email field and uh, then write, let's uh, create a subject. Subject, and we can put in uh, models dot character field for this one. And I want the max length to be maybe, uh, maybe 196 characters. And then in the message, so this message is going to be, can be very, very huge. It can be a lot of paragraphs and stuff. So we are going to be using a reference called text field. So inside this text field, we are not going to give it any max length. As you can see, it requires it. You can put in all of these cool things inside it, but we are not going to do that. And also you can put a lot, a lot of cool stuff inside email field, kind of the same as text field, but yeah. So now we have added this contact and we're going to do the same thing that we did with the student because we want it to appear beautifully. And we can just write def str self 
and in this case instead of the first name we want the email to be shown when we are uh, looking at a database inside this contact class so we're just going to write return and then self and then um, we're just going to return the email and if you are kind of like like weirded out by the self thing what this is it's it's just a thing of what you do when you create a class and when you create an object so if you are confused about that maybe look into like just basic python how classes and how objects work i'm not going to go into that but you don't have to use it a lot so you can just take it as a thing that you have to do just like remember it or something don't worry about it just use this self self dot email and that's pretty much it so now again what we'll do is we'll stop the server because we have to add this contact model inside our database. So the first thing we are going to do is make migrations, my site, press enter. And it's going to create this model of contact. Then we need to add this contact inside our database. So we are going to write migrate, press enter. And it's going to migrate, write triple zero two underscore contact. So this second file has been created over here, which says contact and then id email subject message again this id is kind of like the roll number which automatically increases now we just need to add this model inside our admin panel so that we can see it so let's write contact and then we can just copy and paste this over here and just write contact and save it and run the server again press enter and hopefully the server is running yeah, and now we can just go back to my site and let's actually go to home and you can see in my site now there are two elements or two classes or two models which says contacts. So if you open up contact and we click on add contact, you can see there is uh, the email option and then there's a subject line. Hello. And then you can just write stuff over here. Um, you are freaking cool. All right, then we can save it. And this will be added inside a database. And when you click on your contact, you will be able to see all the elements of this contact form. So what we want to do is, so let's open up our website actually, uh, this one. So what we want to do is in our contact page, we want a form to be there. And when we, and this form will contain email, uh, email message and subject. And when we press on the submit button, this, all the things that he has entered should somehow go inside a database, which we have already created. That is this contact model. So we're going to be looking into that in the next video. And this video has already been pretty long. That is 24 minutes. That is crazy. We have, I've been talking for 20 minutes straight. That's crazy. And no wonder my throat is hurting. But anyways, uh, yeah, this is pretty much it for this video. We learned how to add stuff inside our models file. And yeah, so this was a pretty good video and a pretty important one. So guys, this is pretty much it. Um, I'll see you in the ninth tutorial video and peace out.